I'm not really sure if he knew what he was doing when building out the subnet. Hey, this is Travis. We're going to go through some lower price subnets today to find some gems that might be really good to invest in. We're going to go over my thoughts on many of those subnets. We're going to talk about why alpha prices are down so hard lately. I'm going to tell you which promising subnets that I'm not investing in and more. So leading BitTensor subnet valuations are similar to those of early stage internet startups that are now later stage internet giants. So looking at the permissionless nature of BitTensor, anyone from anywhere in the world can compete and contribute as a miner or a validator on any subnet. And that permissionlessness means that you will find the very best workers in the world. So looking at just this one part of BitTensor, permissionlessness, and comparing it against traditional businesses, you just cannot get the same quality of talent in a traditional business as you can in BitTensor. In a traditional business, you can hire the top quality talent within your local area. And you may even be able to hire the top quality talent from another area in your country if you're willing to pay for them to relocate. So a San Francisco AI startup business can hire the very best talent in San Francisco. But BitTensor subnets get access to the very best talent from across the world. So it's really not fair to compare subnets with traditional businesses because subnets are just way better at finding the best people in the world. Now, BitTensor subnet valuations in US dollars are not sky high yet because BitTensor is relatively unknown. And this is a good thing for you because you can invest in these early stage AI startups. Now, let's take a look at the current BitTensor market landscape. So when I look at the current BitTensor market and I want to get a really good feel for how things are working, there's a couple things that I do. So right now I'm developing this Tau Flute dashboard. This is not public yet, but if you want to sign up, you can go to TauTemplar.com. Uh, hopefully it'll be out in the next couple of weeks. We're going to use this Tau Flute dashboard in this video just because it has all the information that I really care about on it. Maybe there's a one or two things that are not on it yet, but I'm adding more and more. All the information here is publicly available. So you just have to do some research to get this information yourself. Now, the other thing thing I like to do to get a really good feel for the market is listen to BitTensor podcasts. In particular, Revenue Search by DSV is a very valuable resource just because it helps dumb down subnets to something that's a little bit more uh, digestible by the average person rather than like the double standard deviation autist who just like understands all this AI jargon easily. So it's not targeted towards the autists, it's targeted towards the layman. DSV is a BitTensor subnet hedge fund. There there is a DSV link in the description. Now I've added a couple columns since the last Talflu video, so I'll just go over them really quickly here. This owner deposits column is the net inflow or outflow in Tau of the owner wallet. So you can see Subvortex here it hasn't really withdrawn any Tau from their subnet. These three are about the GitHub. So this is the biggest commit in code lines over the last 14 days, the average code lines per 14 days. And this is just a graph of the number of code lines per day over the last 30 days. We've got the number of alpha here, the total alpha a burn percentage and then what the current minor burn is at on the subnet. If this is at 100%, then it means that the subnet is probably not producing anything. So I've actually filtered those out for this video. And then this column here is just the number of miners receiving emissions on the subnet. And the last column here, I'm still playing with it right now, so the numbers aren't really to be trusted yet, but it's the number of days since the last Discord message from a team member in that subnet. So some of them are red here. They probably shouldn't be red um, because I'm pretty sure some of these subnets are still actually doing stuff. If the number is high or in red here, I'll just manually go to the Discord and just double check because often there is a team member who's actually posting there. It's just not explicit that they are a team member. So myself, when I'm trying to look for a new subnet to invest in, I try not to invest in subnets that are over a price of 0.01. The reason for that is there's kind of a ceiling because the price of all of the subnets combined is going to be around one. That's one tau. Sometimes it goes up higher. Uh, it was at two uh, many months ago, but we're getting closer and closer to one every day because the protocol pushes it towards one. It's going to be much more rare for these subnets in the top here to double in price than it is for the lower price subnets here to double in price. Now, many of these top subnets are generating revenue uh, and that justifies their higher price, but some of them are not. So Affine is not, Templar is not, Ridges is not. 
So the reason for some of these subnets that are not generating revenue to have such a high valuation is other reasons. So Affine is by Const, one of the co-founders of BitTensor. So he's got a lot of credibility and he's probably building something awesome. Templar is a decentralized training subnet. I think this week they're starting a 70 or 80 billion parameter AI training run. So they're starting to get pretty close to parity as far as open source models. If you look at where they were like six months ago, they were way further away. They've made a lot of progress in that time. So alpha holders that are investing in Templar are not expecting them to get revenue anytime soon, but it's kind of one of these ones where you like invest in something and incubate it and have it grow and it'll be huge in the future potentially. So I think that's where the relatively elevated price comes from here. Ridges, I've talked about it before. I've got other videos coming on them as well. They're really good at advertising themselves. Plus, I think what they're doing sounds really cool. Basically a self-improving subnet. So it's the latest hotness as far as subnets go right now. And that is what justifies its current price. They did mention that revenue is on their roadmap for some time shortly. I think a, a week ago, they said it was like only three weeks away or something like that, which in my mind, as somebody who has given estimates like that before, probably means a few months away. Now you can see here that their last Discord message was forever ago. I think I don't want to put these in red anymore. I'm going to change that now. There we go. So what this does indicate to me is that maybe I should check their Discord, just make sure that they're actually posting something. But I have, and I know that they are. You can see from their code lines per day here that they're actually very productive. They're constantly improving their subnet. Now, if we look at all these top subnets here, you know, a lot of them have a lot of activity as far as code lines per day. If we look at the price ascending, um, this is where I'm always looking to find deals. You can see a lot of them are not doing anything. There's a few that'll do like one large commit and, and then they won't do anything for a month. And that's understandable because a lot of these smaller subnets are smaller teams. Maybe they're building out an app as well and that's not available in the public GitHub repo that is just for their subnet. So in my eyes, the perfect subnet, which doesn't exist, is a subnet that has owner deposits in the positive, which means they've only put money into the wallet that they registered the subnet from, and they haven't withdrawn very much or any from it. And then they've got a lot of code lines per day, preferably many commits throughout the last month, not just one large one. They've got a minor burn that is not at 100% and they've got many miners on the subnet and they're very active on Discord. Now, a couple columns that I'm eventually probably going to add here is their activity on Twitter. And then the main thing that I find myself doing is looking at the actual repo to just get a feel for what they're actually trying to build here, because maybe all of these metrics I've talked about are looking good, but then you click in and see what they're actually doing with the subnet and you're like, oh, I don't really get it. Um, I don't have high conviction about whatever they're building. Um, I'm not necessarily picking on happy AI here, but it's an example where not very many people have conviction about what they're building even though they clearly are building something uh, as evidenced by the code lines per day that they have here, because subnets could check all these boxes, but their incentive mechanism might be flawed or their business model might be flawed. There's a bunch of things to take into account here. So I'm going to go through some of the lowest price subnets that I've researched. Now, I don't have very many uh, investments in some of these really low price subnets, but some of them could be hidden gems. So this happy AI one is kind of like a therapist app or something like that. I think the app actually does exist. I'd be interested to see if they can get some traction on that app. If they can, then it may justify an investment there. I think Meow is just purely a meme, so I've just kind of been ignoring it. Then there's this Polaris Cloud subnet. If we look at their website here, it says the Airbnb for GPUs. So I think they're doing something with uh, GPU rental. Now, most subnets that are doing GPU rental type stuff, they have a much higher price. I looked into this one a little bit because of that. And when you look at their biggest commit in the last 14 days here, but what they do is they have like a zip file, which I guess is where all their code is. So you'd have to like unzip it to look at the code, I guess, which isn't the easiest thing to parse. And I'm not sure it would be that easy for miners to make improvements on it. So I just kind of stopped looking at them there, but it's an interesting one. Obviously they're building something. They've got a miner dashboard here with some information about their miners. So it does look like they're actually building something. So, so far, just looking at price ascending here, 
it seems like the best one so far, just out of these top three. Better Therapy, I think, is similar to Happy AI, where it's like a therapy subnet thing. Sounds Right, I think, is similar to the Video um, subnet, where they're processing sound in some way. Bitrex here uh, is an interesting one. They're doing product recommendations, and I think it's like the miner that recommends the products that are acted upon in some way, so purchased or viewed or something like that. They get the most emissions. I think that's kind of the goal for them, but they haven't made any updates in the last 30 days. Uh, I did look at their Discord. They say they're planning something soon, but again, like these subnets, are, they're just moving at a lot slower pace than the higher price subnets. Okay, so Eastworld, I think, is doing something with AI agents in like a 3D world or something like that. They haven't had very many updates lately, and there was a lot of hype about them originally. And you can see that their price has just slowly descended over time here. Now, all subnets prices have just slowly descended over time. Now, even some of the uh, higher price subnets, some of them uh, have actually gone up like Ridges and Bitcast is in there going up as well, but there's very few that are going up. And the reason for this is that the sum of subnet prices is going back down closer to one. Right now it's at 1.05, which means that the slow descent in price is going to start flattening out for some of these subnets now. Now Flamewire here is really special because it has an emoji in its name. I'm just kidding. They do something with RPC nodes and allowing people to access chain data. So. So that could have revenue possibilities in the future. 111, I haven't looked too deeply at. It seems like they're a scraping subnet. If I check on the Discord here, uh, somebody says that they're building the product and it's taking longer than expected. Major updates coming soon, blah, blah, blah. Since we're in crypto, he should have written here, trust me, bro. Um, so I definitely don't have an investment in this one. Um, because I don't trust you, bro. But maybe they'll put out something soon here and that'll change things. Tiger Alpha is an interesting one here. Um, they've done one large update in the last month here. They gather treasury information, so verifiable on-chain treasury data via decentralized AI. So they're just gathering treasury data somehow. I'm not really sure how that works or why it works, um, but you could maybe spend some more time and do some research and gain some conviction about it. I don't know. This brain subnet here is by a guy called Fred Krueger. He's a big Bitcoin maxi. I'm not really sure if he knew what he was doing when building out the subnet. So looking at their repo here, it says a BitTensor subnet for automated verification on prediction market statements through distributed consensus. So there hasn't been any commits in the last month. And I think if this subnet does go up in price, you're going to be waiting a while for it, as I think it's going to take a while for the developer to get up to speed on how BitTensor works, just based on some of the videos I saw on Twitter with uh, Fred Krueger talking about BitTensor. Uh, he didn't really understand, I don't think, how BitTensor subnets are supposed to work and was kind of treating it like a meme coin, I guess. I'm not really sure how serious the development is on this subnet right now. So Mega Labs here is building the world's largest decentralized AGI multimodal data set. So you can go and look at Tau stats, for instance. You can see the website that's associated with a subnet here. You can see their GitHub and the Discord, obviously. And then within the Discord, you can go, you can look at the messages here. You can find the pin messages here and read through what the team is saying. And then, of course, on top of that, you can look at Twitter activity. Twitter is starting to become the place where you can kind of see the trends on like, OK, Bridges, for example, they've been on many podcasts recently and many of those podcasts are going to show up on X. So I can give you a couple X tips here. The first is you should go and follow this guy here. But also if you want to find what sort of hype there is for a particular subnet, if you go in the search here and you search for SN and we were looking at subnet 24 recently and I don't know too much about them. So you can do a hashtag or pound sign for those of us that are older and, and then search by latest. And then using this, you can kind of see what sort of hype there is for the subnet. And then often you can find the subnet owner here. So I'm assuming this is the subnet owner. And then you can kind of scroll through their Twitter to see how active they are. So I guess this is the subnet owner for 21 and 24. And I, I see actually a lot of activity about 21, but I don't see very much about 24, which makes me wonder 
Let's take a look at 21, see what that one looks like. Okay, so this is their other subnet. They did have a massive commit on that subnet recently. And just scrolling through it here, you can see there's a lot of Python files. So they're writing a lot of Python code at the very least uh, without looking too deeply, which is great. So hopefully this has been helpful for you. If you want to get access to this dashboard here, you can go to tautemplar.com and sign up for when it becomes public.